Hello and welcome back to Scholastically Natalie, where today I figured we'd have a chat that's vaguely about reading and vaguely about books, but kind of in a diagonal, tangential sort of way. Um, hi guys! <laughs> Sorry, that was like a super fast-paced introduction because I'm actually- this is something I've been thinking about for a bit. This isn't exactly a scripted video, but it's something that I have put in some little points to guide me along because I know that I tend to ramble. Um, today is brought to us, fueled by Mountain Dew, um, and a chili feast- wow, a Philly cheesesteak that I made myself today that I'm very proud of. Um, so today is an interesting topic that I have been musing about for a bit, which is why can't I stop reading fanfiction? Um, and I have the subtitle as a book nerds musing on fan generated content. Um, I've included a couple main fanfiction hosting sites, although LiveJournal is definitely more out of the loop. And although, yes, some people post on Wattpad, it's more weird self inserty fanfiction that I'm not a fan of and I don't care about celebrities. So that's not the site for me. Currently, Archive of Our Own, also known as AO3, is the most popping, um, but fanfiction.net, if you care to sift through uh, some of the real bad writing on there, you can find some gems. Um, in order of use, though, LiveJournal used to be the most popular, then fanfic.net appeared, um, and that boomed for a bit, and then AO3, once it got past its beta stage, uh, where you could only invite other people, and that was the only way you could join the website, um, they worked out and are currently still booming. They're great. Uh, their filter system is something else, although sometimes I have a hard time filtering through it because of their tagging system. Anyways, we can get into the particulars about <laughs> each of these websites a different time. So I figured we could talk about like my perspective on fanfiction and fandoms and stuff. So let's talk about fandoms. So as you consume media, be it music, TV shows, books, um, there tend to be other fans of that content since it's generally been nationally published or worldwide published. Um, and thus, the internet's a magical, beautiful thing where people who are also interested in the same thing get together and talk about it, especially if it's related or targeted at young adults because that's like the perfect age where they're on the internet enough um, to talk about it and also not too old to have it leave their mind for a bit. Um, that's why a lot of the content out right now revolves around like shadow hunters and uh, Percy Jackson had a big uptick but that's fallen out a little bit out of fashion so I think one of the other ones I've been seeing a lot of is like the librarians um, and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and so you always have the largest fandoms, which is often Sherlock, Teen Wolf, The Avengers. All of those have massive amounts of people who, without even writing fan fiction, they draw fan art. They may even make games based on it. They animate things. They build things inspired by these pieces of work. I mean, it's very similarly people who would be going to conventions and doing cosplays are more likely than not to be engaging in other fandom content, which fanfiction is just a subset of. Um, what you'll also find is that anybody can write fanfiction. Anybody can write fanfiction and have it just completely explode as well, um, which is similar but not quite as similar to writing books, where you will find prospective or burgeoning authors, maybe even publishing fanfiction or original work, because Archive of Our Own also hosts that, and people consuming it there, which they can get popular off of. Um, I have, a, because anybody can access it, much like self-publishing, I have encountered some incredible, absolutely, like, life-changing pieces of work. Um, and then I have also encountered pieces of work that make me cry a little bit and want to completely edit them to death. Um, by the way, if you want me to edit anything you've written, hit me up, toss me an email, I'll try to be a good human and remember to put it in my link in the description. If you say that I can edit it, like, in a video, that'd be great. If you don't say that, I, I won't do it, but I'll edit it and get back to you. Um... I love editing. <laughs> it's a far less strenuous process than a writing. Um, but I find myself with some fandom slash uh, 
just pieces of media that I've consumed, then I don't read fan fiction for it all. And for my absolute favorite series, or ones that I've really connected with, I don't consume it. Um, for instance, Terry Goodkind's series, I can't remember the name of his series, it's so freaking long. <laughs> um, begins with Wizard's First Rule and has gone past uh, the Omen Machine to... I, oh, I can't even remember everything that it's gotten to. I quit after Confessor uh, because by then I had caught up to his writing and when the next one came out, um, I just, I, I couldn't keep up my enthusiasm. But one, Terry Goodkind has respectfully requested that you don't write fan fiction about his work, which, fair. And also, I don't know how you could because his world is just so intricate that I would genuinely have a hard time poking holes in his own story to then write fanfiction about, like, legitimately. Um, and that's one of the things is that some authors will request that you don't write fanfiction about their work because, and I do understand this, um, by having an entire fandom make headcanons, which is uh, outside of the established canon those air quotes around the canon um, of the universe, which is set in stone. It's written by the author. It's solid. Head canons is your own personal take on what's going on in the universe. Having hundreds of thousands of millions, if you're super good, uh, make decisions about your characters and all agree upon them can sometimes twist your work or change what you're ultimately trying to create which can be argued for with the death of the author approach, which I do like, um, and I, I just like being able to interpret things up to my own brain instead of going, is this actually, like, a terrible piece of writing? Um, of when looking at the author's intent. Uh, but I do, of course, think it's important to be critical of everything you read. Um, and so you see that. But for instance, the March of Country series, which is absolutely stunning. I love it. Um, I haven't reread it for a bit, but oh my gosh, it's absolutely beautiful and amazing. And it's probably like the best thing I've read for so freaking long. Uh, it's a sci-fi uh, four-part series that is oh, the character development in that just, oh my god. <laughs> And then Battle Mage by Stephen Aryan. I actually haven't even finished this series, which sounds crazy, but I bought the first book in England about four years ago now, and then I kind of forgot about it because, you know, we traveled back and I was tired. And then I got the second book out of the library. And, like, the books are so disconnected but similar, and, like, I love that. It also doesn't have each book directly impacting always the same characters. So there's not this drive to finish the series. And to be honest, I feel like I need to completely reread the entire thing in order to read the third book now, because it, it has been a while. I forget details. Um, and lastly, we have The Thief, um, which is a book series that I own all of the books for. I fell in love with it in uh, actually seventh grade. Um, and it's really what's led me onto my kick of really loving smart political things mixed with action. And I can never hate it for that. I love it. It's so well written. And because of this, I have never felt the need to search out fanfiction for them. And so let's talk about it. So why do I consume fanfiction? Like, legitimately, why do I consume it? Um, and so having thought about this, I've come up with several answers. And so number one is, of course, that there was an unsatisfactory ending to the piece. And I can say that with solid fact. That is why I first started consuming Harry Potter fanfiction. I hated, I hated the ending. Well, the epilogue, I should say. I was okay with the ending until I got older and smarter. Um... Well, I guess more critical should be the response to that, not just smarter, I'm sorry. If you still like the Harry Potter ending, that's fine. I just have opinions about it. Um, and that's pretty much what happened with- oh, I thought of another one and then I forgot it. <laughs> no! Um, I can't remember where I was going with it, I got super distracted. <laughs> Um, but when I don't feel like, I don't feel like all the storylines have been tied off. I don't feel like all the characters have gotten what they need to get out of it. Whether that be in you know, some sort of tragic failure to achieve what they've set out for, or whether they achieve that entirely, for me, there just was not that satisfactory ending. Um, 
And a great example for that is the Master of Death. Now, ultimately, the Master of Death in Harry Potter leads to absolutely nothing, right? It's just kind of a sort of discussion about believing these things that people hype up to be and how they're ultimately nothing, but also kind of not nothing because the stone does stuff. So then it's also a discussion about giving up power um, and letting go of it because it's something that the two ultimate leaders of the sides of the fight couldn't give up and thus continued it. So it, it is a discussion about like force and like giving up power once you gain it, which I thought was an interesting talk, but also not explored explicitly enough in the book that I think it made enough of an impact. And then secondly, we have Oh, that, that was the other unsatisfactory ending, ending that I also have complaints about on un Unexplored Universe. Star Wars. <laughs> now, mind you, I was not deep in this Star Wars discussion. I, I didn't have any deep thoughts about it. Um, and then my friend gave us like an hour long lecture on the Star Wars movies events. And then my brain just got real stuck on Obi-Wan for a hot while because he deserved better. <laughs> better writing, just better everything. Um, and so for me, his ending is unsatisfactory to me. I, I don't like how he ends up in the movies. I don't like how it happens. And I don't like the ending of things. I, because I do enjoy a good bad ending. If you know what I mean, like, like things fail. I do enjoy those because it injects a bit of reality. We can't expect everything to go a perfect way and having a, a realistic bad ending kind of works out. Um, but this was supposed to be a good ending, but it managed to be a bad ending for me. So like, yeah, I have a lot of opinions about it if you want, okay? <laughs> and then the unexplored universe is what goes into some of these. With Harry Potter, with Star Wars, they introduced so much possibility from the universes that they built from their world building, and ultimately none of it was utilized. There's there's a lot of wow factor, and haha, that's fun, but then like, things aren't pushed further. The portraits can talk and look at things, um, but we don't regularly use them for spying or infiltrating. No, that would be too easy. Um, like, it's, it's stuff like, and yes, I do agree with the whole, like, wizards have no common sense, and thus they, these things that they deem mundane that we see possibilities in, it's because we treat our own world in the exact same way. Um, but also, some people don't do that with our world, and so I think out of the thousands of people and eons that wizards have existed, that they haven't developed these, you know, spying practices and covert networks. Uh, unlikely. <laughs> but then again, the facsimile is also that wizards are just even more exaggerated stupidity of the modern human. Um, although I don't know if that's actually what the allegory was supposed to be. Um, and I feel the same way about the unexplored universe with Star Wars, in that we've had so many trilogies, and yet none of them do anything different, ultimately. In my view, analysis of the story, none of them are different and they all tell the same story. So for me, well, you know, the, the first six are similar, but like the new trilogy, it's the same story. Nothing is new. Um, so for me, that leads a lot of dissatisfaction and like, we could have done so much more with this. Um, especially since both Star Wars and Harry Potter have immense, immense capability for extremely wacky, out-of-the-box stuff, and also a lot of really fun politics, which is what my fourth point is. I want some political stuff in most of my content, and I like seeing behind the doors scheming and manipulation and stuff, so for me to lack that in both of them when they both have a crappy government that needs to be improved and thus has so many gaps in its workings that can easily be taken advantage of by somebody with a good brain for it, that frustrates me to no ends. Although I guess technically Sidious did do that as the bad guy and I liked that, but I would have liked to see somebody do it back. <laughs> Third on my list is potential relationships. Pretty much once I sunk into the rabbit hole of I wish Harry Potter had a better ending, um, then I kind of entered all the, the weird side things of it wherein sometimes the canon relationships don't make that much sense and aren't that good. Um, and sometimes you don't need to have 
romance in things, which was shocking, but also led me to the sometimes you don't need to have romance in things, which is a hill I will die on. I hate forced romance, hi. <laughs> I think it's boring and unnecessary, and I'd much rather read just some nice supportive friendship bonds. Uh, why does the ultimate love have to be kissing? Why can't the ultimate love be supporting you? Anyways, beyond that, sometimes you see characters with chemistry and their chemistry is insane and amazing and so good and then it's never fulfilled or maybe you know it's an anime that only got 12 episodes so it's a it's kind of a not so great ending but they never got renewed so boy no <laughs> and those sorts of things um for me i see a lot of interesting better relationships at stake in so many things that could be so well done or at least better written for example harry potter Ginny and harry's relationship is extremely poorly written and kind of garbage um one oedipus complex enough said two weird family complex abandonment complex thing that I don't quite get and I don't quite like that's kind of him projecting an acceptance into the Weasley family by marrying their youngest daughter. Three, Ginny had a really weird obsession with Harry and all the stuff she says about having purposefully made him jealous so he'd date her in sixth year. Weird. Just really weird. Um, yeah, so I had a lot of feelings about that relationship even though as a smaller child I was like, no, this makes perfect sense. It makes zero sense. <laughs> um, Harry has had more on-screen interactions with Luna and more emotional investment in Luna than with Ginny, like, before the sixth book. Like, <sighs> and then we have fun. And now that I've just sunk deep into my, uh, over 30,000 fanfiction deep hole, I'm just staying here. It's fun. <laughs> um, and part of it is just being able to see a fandom go okay i know this i know this i know this i know this and it's easy to read it's you don't have to sit there and be like i forgot this tiny little detail um it's just nice and then you don't have all the info dumping although sometimes you do again i hate info dumping so uh, but you don't need all this info dumping on world creation and facts and how the world works um and that definitely helps a lot. Um, then we have the aspect that is definitely something people don't talk about often, but the writing itself. Again, I have read some real bad writing. I've sifted through some garbage stories, I'm not gonna lie to you. <sighs> My worst record is that I suffered through 25 chapters of a really poorly written story because the concept was so good. I was so down for it. And then they just left this letter at the end that's like, hi, I, I just, I can't finish this. Um, but here's like five snippets and like kind of what I was thinking with each of them. And then they didn't give us a plot line. So we didn't know what the ultimate resolution would be, but instead they gave us like five brief writing excerpts. And I was like, well, thanks for nothing. <laughs> But I have also read amazing things that made me pay more attention to my own writing. Um, one that I will always push is Embers by Vothra. Uh, it is a Avatar The Last Airbender fan fiction that is about 97 or 98 chapters long and over 700,000 words. It is stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it. They put so much time and effort into this and it is it is probably the best written thing I've ever read <laughs> um, because they do so much additional world building on top of already good world building and they pay so much close attention to such small things actually now that I think about it, this would be why I love it so much because it is similar in that sense to March Up Country where it takes things and it goes okay but if we want to grow that crop, if we want to build that machine, what do we need in place to do that? And that is just an amazing mind and a great way to look at things. Um, 
yeah, I will endlessly preach about embers. <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and so lastly, we have comfort, which I have already kind of mentioned this for the fun of just kind of, I don't need to think too hard about these things I'm learning about. I already know which characters I like. I know which characters I want to see more of. So all I have to do is I click those little character selection buttons in the filter tab and just find them. And then I can look through my own saved ones and find ones that make me happy and I don't have to sift through a bookcase. And like, I don't know what it is, but it's just such slight differences between reading physical books or like, uh, you know, actual books um, that it does bring me a lot of happiness and joy in the end, even though reading books does that as well. Um, it's an interesting way to connect even more with concepts and things you like. Um, I suppose in some way, because this is something my brain views as fun, I'm not sitting here analyzing it with my brain. Um, and oftentimes when I read actual books or uh, writings, I often analyze that with my brain. And I'm thinking about, like, implications. And I haven't found one in a while that's really made me just turn off my brain. Because that's almost impossible in terms of, like, analyzing new literature, because, like, these aren't things that have been nitpicked to death. Um, it's, it's kind of fun to look at them. And oftentimes I will find interesting themes, but so often a person's sole reason for writing it is, I want this character to just have a nice life. <laughs> and I can get behind that. It's kind of just like, it's good. It feels nice, and I get that resolution that I want for characters that I enjoy and empathize with and sympathize with, and I really like that. So I really have no idea how long I've just been recording for. I hope that this discussion in some way will open your brain or ears, uh, or you have your own opinions on fanfiction. Um, I have more thoughts about it than I thought I did. Um, but that is the basics of what I wanted to discuss, which is just like, why? Because I've been thinking for the last couple weeks, why do I read it? And I realize it's because it's mostly media that I don't find satisfactory in some way, shape, or form. There's always this little part of my brain sitting there going, but what about this? Or what if something different happened? Um, and I love that. So... If you have opinions, let me know in the comments. If you think this was an interesting com uh, content, let me know, and maybe I'll find something else to do a discussion on with my personal view about the writing process or books or something to do with it. Um, and if you'd prefer we stick back to the other stuff I was doing, like reading books and telling you about them, or writing some stuff and talking while we do that, or d other things, let me know. Um, let me know what you were thinking about seeing the next video. I know that I need to pick back up on Candide, so that's probably what I'll be prepping next. But if you have a special request, I'm sure I'll be able to fit that in. So, I hope you guys will have a great rest of your week. I've been having